morning. Welcome to this beautiful feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Very special day for a Marian parish for us to celebrate. Mary interceding for us in our needs and, and taking care of us as a parish. And we just thank God for our Blessed Mother, that she is there for us always. In preparing for this homily, this is a, a a feast that can get very theological if you start analyzing the assumption and, and all the messages that are there. And I'm not that smart, so I went a different direction. I thought I would read you a story. I was reading and reflecting on, on this scripture and I read a story about a man that had always dreamt of going on a Caribbean cruise. It was his dream. He researched all the various cruise lines and what they offered the different routes and all the different places you could go. And after saving his money for many months, he and his sister and brother-in-law signed up to go on a 10-day Caribbean cruise. He was all excited about this trip, this vacation, finally. He talked about it for months. Then about six weeks before they were to leave for their trip, the cruise line sent him an email and in this email was a video. The video showed the ship that he would be on, all the amenities, all the food and the meals and the shows and all the fun he could have on the ship. It showed him all the places they were going to stop, all the places they would see, the excursions that they could go on, all the fun things that they were going to be able to do on his cruise. The man was so excited that he, he would realize his dream finally, and it was just what he needed to get completely excited about his upcoming journey, to really look forward to what was sure to be an incredible journey. So I started thinking about that email and, that he received from the cruise line. What a really cool idea, right? But in our day and time, we can get on YouTube and find a video of anything. We can learn how to do anything. We can go any place in the world and see videos of that place. But still, wouldn't it be nice if everything we were about to experience, something new in our lives, we would get out of nowhere this detailed email telling us everything about it. Wouldn't that make us feel more comfortable about our lives and where we're going? What if every vacation we ever took came with an email that let us know what it was really going to be like. So we've all had great vacations, I'm sure, but some vacations have been a little challenging. And so wouldn't it be nice to have an email telling us all about that vacation? Wouldn't that be a good thing? What if before you got married, now easy, okay, all you married folks, what if before you got married you received an email that described exactly what married life was going to be like? what your spouse was going to be like. Think about that one. What if before you started having children, you got an email that showed you what they were going to be like in their 20s, what they would accomplish, what they would be doing? What if you got an email prior to every new job you ever started that showed you what it was really going to be like to work for that company or that organization? I know that sounds good, but my dear friends, sometimes I think it might be prudent that we not know everything that's going to happen. But it's still kind of a sense of security, maybe even peace or satisfaction in knowing what's coming and where we're going to be in the future. Well, today on this assumption, on this feast, God does not send us an email, but I think God is giving us an example of this amazing feast is kind of a preview of where we are going one day. We know that where Mary went when she left this world is exactly where we want to go eventually after our journey here on earth is done. We want to be with her in heaven. We want to be with Jesus, our Savior. We want to see that beatific vision of God the Father and all his angels and saints. 
where Mary was assumed to is exactly what Jesus has promised us. We go back to the first reading in Revelation. It says the woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. And so we see that Mary was already destined to follow Jesus. She was already destined to be in heaven. Jesus himself tells his disciples the same thing in the Gospel of John. In chapter 14, where he assures the disciples, and he assures us as well, that in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? So we, like Mary, are destined to follow Jesus into his glory. This feast day then becomes a preview for all of us of what our future holds. And my dear brothers and sisters, it is a good future if we are faithful to him, if we avoid sin, if we love him, if we serve him, if we're attentive to the poor, those who are suffering, if we offer our time and our talents and our treasure, we will follow him in this life. And even though it happened a little differently for Mary, Jesus was the source, source of salvation for this holy woman. And just like us, Mary was given a promise, a promise of incredible things if only she would obey and trust God. And that was her yes, her fiat. What we celebrate today on this feast day is God's fulfillment of his promise to Mary. At the end of her life, she who had been kept safe from sin from her first moment of conception in her mother's womb did not pay the price of sin, which is death. Instead, Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven to receive her eternal reward. That same reward that has been promised to us. Heaven is not just for who we perceive as holy, like the Pope or bishops or priests. It's not just for those who are martyred or church, doctors of the church. Heaven is for all of us. This feast day is to inspire us all to follow Jesus even more closely. It's said in that introduction, Father C.B. gave that Mary was an active participant in her faith in, in following her son to heaven. She actively participated. We're called to be active participants in the mass, but we're also called to be active participants when we walk out that door. We're supposed to be following Jesus on our way to heaven. We're supposed to be aware of that each day. You know that man, he saved for months to go on that cruise. We save, we sacrifice all the time for vacations and for trips. What are you going to do to get safely home to heaven? My prayer is that Mary's trip home inspires all of us to long for heaven that much more. And yes, we might get excited for vacations, for trips, for a cruise, or even doing something new and different. I know I do. But how much more excited should all of us be for our journey home to heaven? May our Blessed Mother intercede for us in all our needs.